second. Okay guys, good day sa inyo ulit. Again, I'm here, Sir B, to discuss about our first chapter, which is all about the principle of statics. So again, yung principle of statics natin is, ito ay parang review lang ng ating physics. So let's proceed with the next slide. So, introduction. So first, let's define what is engineering mechanics. So basa-basahin natin to, sabay-sabay. So engineering mechanics, this is a branch of the physical science that is concerned with the state of rest or motion of bodies that are subjected to the action of forces. Okay, engineering mechanics, so ito po ay subdivided into three branches. So what is the first branch? So rigid body mechanics. So dito papasok yung ating subject na static of rigid bodies. But again, Yung ating rigid body mechanics is nahati sa dalawang division. So, do sa next slide, ipapaliwanag natin. Si static and si dynamic. The second one, deformable body mechanics. So, ito po ay itetake nyo sa second semester. So, yan has a subject code na or subject name na mechanics of deformable bodies. So, hopefully, ako rin yung maging instructor nyo kasi last year ako naman yung mahawak din yun. And last will be the fluid mechanics. So again, ito is magiging subject nyo rin. I think this is handle na third year for SEM. So yung mga kuya nyo ngayon, ito yung kanilang subject na hinahawakan. Okay. So let's proceed with the next slide para malaman natin yung division ng, dalawang division ng rigid body mechanics. So again, we have statics and dynamics. But first, let's define what is statics all about the statics of rigid bodies deals with the equilibrium of bodies that is those that are either at rest or move with a constant velocity while you adding dynamics so this is concerned with the acceleration motion of bodies so again statics deals ang main focus natin so statics deals with the equilibrium of bodies that is the those that are either at rest or moving with a constant velocity. Next, what are the historical development na nangyari dito sa ating mechanics? So, these are the three known uh, persons. So, yan naman is nasa module nyo. So, we have Archimedes. Next one is Galileo Galilei. And the last one, yung pinaasikat, yung... Newton Law of Motion, so si Isaac Newton. So, paibasa na lang ako nitong tatlong to. So, basahin yung contribution nila when it comes to mechanics. So, let's proceed with the next slide. So, ang ano discussion natin is ano lang ha, mabilis lang. Parang uh, discussion lang nung ating chapter. Ano? So, again, nasa inyo naman yung module, basahin nyo na lang yung kabuuan since ito is parang summary lang nung chapter na yan. Okay, what are the basic quantities? So, meron tayong apat. We have the length, time, mass, and the force. So, doon sa module naman na binigay doon, meron tayong uh, binigay naman yung kanyang mga common unit when it comes to length, time, mass, and force. Okay? So, pa pa pakitandaan na lang itong mga basic quantities na gagamitin natin for the static of rigid bodies. Okay, next. So, I think familiar pa kayo dito. We have that Newton's three law of motion. So, for the first law, so ito yung equilibrium natin. So, this is moving at a constant velocity. Okay. So, the next one, the second law. So, this deals with the accelerated motion. O, meron tayong pinag-uusapan na acceleration A. From where, yung force can be commuted as mass times the acceleration. Next is the third law. 
So the third law, so from the keyword na action, reaction, impulse, momentum. From where you have force of A on B and vice versa. Yung, yung force of B on the object A. So again, paibasa na lang ulit ako nito. Again, this is just a review. So, i-recall nyo lang yung mga dati nyong nalaman dun sa inyong subject na physics. So, aside from that, we have the Newton's Law of Gravitational Attraction. So, I think familiar pa kayo sa equation na to. From where yung force of gravitation between the two particles, F, denoted by capital letter F, so that is equals to G, the capital letter G. So, ano ba yung G? So, from here, G is the universal constant of gravitation. According to experimental evidences, from where yung value niya is 66.73 times 10 to the negative 12 cubic meter per kilogram second squared. So this is the product of M1 and M2. From where yung M1 and M2, that is the mass of each of the two particles. And R, so that is just the distance between the two particles, denoted by R squared. Okay, so again, pa-memorize lang naman ito. This is just a direct substitution. But again, yung G has a constant value of 66.73. So, try to memorize this. But I believe this value is nakalagay din sa calculator nyo. Constant value G. Okay, so we have also the equation for the weight. So that is just equal sa mass times the gravitational acceleration G. So, with a value of 9.81 meter per second squared for SI and for the English unit or the US unit na anong ang value niya ng G sa English? So, that is 32.2 feet per second squared. Okay, so let's proceed with the next slide. Mm -hmm. May ano pa pala yun? Okay, so what are the units of measurement? So, meron tayong dalawang system, no? So, una is the SI units. So, the SI stands for the System International D Units. Kung naman basa dyan. So, the International System of Units abbreviated SI after the French. System International D Units is a modern version of the metric system, which has received worldwide recognition. The SI system defines length which is in meter, so dito pala siya in-indicate kung ano yung mga unit nung ating sa second slide natin. No? So, so for length, so that is in meter, so yung time, that is in seconds, the mass, which is in kilogram, the unit of force, also called as newton, so that is equals to n. But then again, uh, try to recall also yung ating mga conversion dito. Ano? So, what are the other unit of length? So, pwedeng maging cm yan, centimeter. So, sa English, we have uh, inches, yung feet. So, ayan. So, kakailangan niyo yan. Pwede kasi mangyayari sa problem natin, magkakaiba yung units. Yung iba na sa English or US unit. And the other units are in SI. So, try nyo rin malaman. I recall nyo rin. So, di ba ang Newton? So, saan lang ba din siya nakuha? Diba Newton is a unit of weight? So, kung maaalala sa previous slide natin, weight is just equals to the mass times the gravitational acceleration, G. Kung saan yung ating unit ng mass, so that is in either kilogram or gram, but for Newton, so that is just equals lang sa kilogram multiplied by meter per second squared. So, that is the expansion ng ating unit na Newton. Okay, next, we have the U.S. customary or the English unit. So, sa alam ng karamihan. So, in the U.S. customary system of units or FPS, from where yung unit of length that is measured in feet, the time, also same as for the SI, so units. But then again, yung time mo has iba't ibang Unit, ano? So, pwedeng minute, pwedeng hour, etc. And force, so that is in pound, force or the weight, kung saan yung unit of mass is equivalent dun sa slug. So, ang slug mo, so that is converted or can be written also as pound multiplied by the second raised to 2 or second squared over feet. 
Okay, so on the table below, so that shown there is the system of units. So, ginawa niya lang tabulated, no? Yung mga nakasulat lang dito, ano? So, try to recall this again, pakikabisado na lang din, since gagamitin natin siya dito sa subject na ito. So, I hope sa susunod nating pagkikita, sa susunod na video, medyo ano na kasi yan, uh, bibilisan natin yung facing, ano? Since uh, minamaximize natin yung oras para ma maikli lang yung video na magagawa natin. So please try to review this. Ano? Yung mga simpleng conversion, dapat alam nyo na rin yan. Etc. Next, the international system of units o yung mga prefixes na ginagamit natin. So when alam yung numerical quantity is either very large or very small, the units used define its size may be notified by using the following prefixes. Okay, so instead of writing, ang concept lang kasi nito, instead of writing it like this one, so diba ito is naka, for example, ito, 1 million. So you can write that when it comes to exponential form. So pwede mo siyang isulat as 10 raised to 6. Or that can be written the prefix na mega or denoted by capital letter M. So, dun sa billion, so that is 10 raised to 9, which is equivalent also to giga, or denoted by the symbol capital letter G, etc. So, baba, pag 0 0.001, so that can be written as 10 raised to negative 3, so that is equals to milli, or denoted by the symbol M. Yung micro, so denoted by mu, and nano, noted by small letter n. So again, this uh, paikabisado nito since yung mga units na giga, mega gagamitin natin yan. Ano? So alamin nyo yung kanyang uh, exponential form and yung equivalent prefixes. Okay? Okay, so let's proceed with the next slide. So under 1.5, we have the numerical calculation. So ano ba naasa dito sa numerical calculation nito? So in this section, we will discuss these topics together with some other important aspects involved in all engineering calculations. So the first one, we have the dimensional homogeneity. So each term must be expressed in the same unit. Oh, not necessary uh, limit lang sa same unit, but dapat related lang din sa bawat isa. Kung maaalala yung ating mga unit, di ba meron tayong SI and yung US customary. So, dapat uniform lang yung unit natin or dimensionally homogeneity or iisa express in the same unit. Kung SI yan, SI dapat lahat kung English, English yan or depende sa pinaparequire dun sa problem. Okay, significant figures. So the number of significant figure contains in any number determines the accuracy of the number. Okay, so uh, alam niyo na rin naman to. So ito naman is na discuss na rin sa inyong physics and uh, i diniskas din natin do sa module niyo. So please try to review lang din what is the significant figures. So parang ano lang din naman yun, uh, somehow related din lang din dito yung mga prefixes na gagamitin. And then, the last one, the rounding off of numbers. So, dyan papasok yung ating accuracy ng result. Kasi pag dami ng decimal places, pag lapit ng sagot sa katokanan. So, ang concept lang din naman yan, for example, uh, kung uh, one decimal place lang yung kinonsider mo, uh, medyo, pag sa dulo, iba yung lalabas na sagot, or merong discrepancy between dun sa four decimal place tsaka sa one decimal places lang na round off mo. So, ang nangyayari kasi dito, dito sa mga notes, dito sa numerical calculation, iniiwasan natin na sobrang haba yung yung number. Kasi, for example, uh, pag dami ng decimal places nyan, uh, merong asing, uh, tawag dito, nagkaarong asin na pwede maging source ng uh, mistake or error. So, hambawa, uh, napindot mo nga sa alq but nung nilipat mo sa papel, may nakalimutan ka isa number. Ano, so, uh, I hope na iintindahan yung gusto kong mangyari dito o iparating sa inyo. So, pwede kasi maging source ng mistake o ng pagkakamali yung uh, 
Ganyan, ito mga tatlong to. Ano? Okay, so let's proceed with the next slide. 1.6. What are the general procedure for analysis? Ito, napaka-importante nito. So attending a lecture, reading this book, and studying the example problems helps. But the most effective way of learning the principle of engineering mechanics is to solve problems. So again, kaya nga pinapabili ko sa inyo yung librong yun, yung Engineering Mechanics by uh, sinong author nito? Si Ferdinand L. Singer. It's para maapag-practice kayo. Ano? So hindi naman limited lang dyan yung mga references na pwede nyo gamitin. Again, sa library natin, uh, maraming librong available na pwede nyo gawing reference para sa subject na to. At the same time, online, marami kayo maihanapan ng problem. Pwede nyo pag-practicean. Again, effective way of learning the principle of engineering mechanics is to solve problems. Actually, guys, pwede naman kasi natin isolve lahat ng problems na nasa libro. Ang problema lang, baka dalawang chapter, tatong chapter pa lang tayo is tapos na yung semester. So, ang role namin dito is to impart to you the principle of solving problems for a specific topic. And then, kayo mga estudyante, kaya nga magpapagawa ako ng plates is para i-apply nyo yung principle na bahagi namin sa inyo. Para lang di ma-assess nyo kung nauunawaan nyo yung topic. And then, para ma-assess nyo kung if kailangan nyo pang pag-aralan pa ito. Or kailangan nyo pang pag yung topic na ayan. So, anyway, ako naman ganyan din noon. So, gumaling lang din siguro ako kasi sa pagsosolve ko ng problem. Kasi pagdating nyo ng review, maniwala man kayo sa hindi, uh, may kota kasi kami na dapat sa isang araw na-solve kami ng 100 problems. Halo-halo uh, naman yun, no? hinahati na namin sa math, sa design, and sa geo and hydraulics. So, everyday yun. So, hindi kasi may... Darating yung sa time na yung isang problem o yung problem sa libro na solve mo na ng limang beses kasi wala na kayo mahanapan ng problem. Anyway, nai-share ko lang. Since kayo naman is darating this point na yun, magiging review kayo. Later on, kukuha yun ng board exam and magiging licensed civil engineer. Okay, so to be successful at this, it is important to always present the work in a logical and orderly manner as suggested by the following sequence of steps. So ito naman, I think na ituro rin naman sa inyo ng mga professor nyo sa physics, meron step-by-step -step process yan para sa pagsosolve and para maging orderly lang yung inyong way ng solution. Lalo na kung naging, kung naging prop niyo siguro si Ma'am Lascano. Ayan na. Naging prop ko din yan. Kaya magalala. Uh, read the problem carefully and try to correlate the actual physical situation with the theory studied. Step number one. And then step number two, tabulate the problem data and draw to a large scale any necessary diagram. So later on, matututunan yung gumawa ng free body diagram or FBD. Okay. So, ananda dyan din. And emphasize yung draw to a large scale. So, mas maganda, lakayan nyo yung drawing para mas kita nyo. Ano? And, so, so first step, read the problem carefully. So, maganda habang binabasa nyo yung problem, ini-imagine nyo na no, kung ano magiging itsura ng figure or kung paano magiging mechanics ng problem na yan. Next, apply the relevant principles, generally in mathematical form. When writing an equation, be sure they are dimensionally dimensionally homogeneous. So, ayun nga. Din-discuss naman doon sa mga previous slide yung dimensional homogeneity ng inyong mga units. And, ayun. Maganda yung establish na equations na gagamitin. Next, solve for the necessary equations and report the answer with no more than three significant figures. Ako sa exam or sa lecture, uh, ako at least four decimal places. Sabi nga kanina, pag dami sa minan decimal places, pag accurate ng answer. But iniiwasan din naman na sobrang haba since yun is pwede maging cause ng error or mistake. Lalo na sa paglilipat ng sagot. Next, study the answer with technical Judgment and common sense to determine whether or not it seems reasonable. Okay, so do sa pagsusulat ng answer, uh, please, uh, basahin mabuti ano. Uh, minsan kasi, uh, excited din tayo minsan magsagot. Uh, nakalimutan basahin yung problem o yung pinapahanap sa problem, yung pala. Sa ibang unit, nire-required yung final answer. So marami na ako na biktima dyan, ano. 
So, ayun nga. Maganda, basahin nyo mabuti yung problem. Minsan kasi hindi maiwasang ex- na-excite tayo, lalo na kung alam na alam natin yung gagawin. Anyway, share ko lang din ang nangyari rin naman sa akin before. Ayan, hindi naman na iwasan na magkaganon. Ano? Sobrang excite mo. Alimutan mo na yung final answer, iba palang unit yung required. Okay, so what are the important points dito sa ating uh, module na ito, dito sa chapter na ito? So, parang summary lang. First, static is the study of bodies that are rest or move with constant velocity. So, number two, a particle has a mass but a size that can be neglected and a rigid body does not deform under load. So, nasa module nyo naman yan. So, maririnig nyo siguro madalas yung word na a rigid body. Okay? Next, so of course, this is either a push or pull of one body on another. So, dalawa lang maging pwede yung direction ng force. It's either pull or push. Next, concentrated forces are assumed to act at a point on a body. Next, Newton's three law of motion should be memorized. Hindi naman need na memorize talaga, but be familiarized lang din. So, pa I recall na lang. So, mass is a measure of a quantity of matter that does not change from one location to another. Weight refers to the gravitational attraction of the earth on a body or quantity of mass. Its magnitude depends upon the elevation at which the mass is located. Okay, so para sa item na to, uh, uh, ano lang naman yan? Uh, sa ulo nyo lang yung formula na yon yung kanina, with regards to the gravitational acceleration. So, most of the time naman, ano lang yan? Yung mass mo, yung, to get the weight, mumultiply mo lang ng gravitational acceleration. Wala namang tricky na abot tayo sa pag iba ng height niya o yung uh, with reference do sa paglapit niya do sa center of the earth. Mag-iiba yung value ng weight. Okay, so in the SI system, the units of force, the newton is a derived unit. Meter per second and kilogram are base units. So, prefixes na G, giga, mega, kilo, mili, micro, and dano are used to represent large and small numerical quantities. Their exponential should be also be known, along with the rules for using the SI units. Next, perform numerical calculation with several significant figures and then report the final answer to three significant figures. So, algebra, algebra e- manipulation of an equation can be checked in part by verifying that the equation remains dimensionally homogeneous and know the rules for rounding off numbers. Okay guys, so that ends our discussion or the review for the physics. So guys, again, I recall na lang ako noon. So, do sa susunod nating video tutorial, uh, medyo bibilisan na natin yung facing no. So I expect maalam na kayo mag convert ng mga unit, maalam na kayo mag round off yung mga significant figures natin and yung mga prefixes na gagamitin kabisado nyo na ano okay guys so that ends our discussion so please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel so if you like the video please hit the like button and if you have comments or suggestion please don't forget to write it on the comment section below peace out